Uh, I just posted a chart so that way you'll know what I'm referring to. And we're talking here for a few minutes, but I apologize for being a little tardy. I have two little girls here that are honorary as uh, Dickens. <laughs> so I had to help my wife wrangle them. Uh, they're a little bit of a handful. So happy non farm payroll Friday. I hope you're all doing well. I'm absolutely having a fantastic week. Um, just in a better, better place mentally and not grieving anymore. So it's, it's been very wonderful for me, but, uh, the title of this space is cooking with gas and non farm payroll. Uh, what's the cooking with gas part? What is that? Uh, well, we were sharing some results with, uh, a real market and a real trading account, not uh, market replay, not some demo account, nothing like that. And I told you the last time we did a Twitter space that you would see live trading. <clears throat> and a lot of times, you know, I, I wanna go out here and I wanna do a lot of certain things that would please my flesh, okay? It would be very, very satisfying buying <laughs> let's say it that way to be able to do a lot of things that i want to do and i know i can easily do it but i'm trying to be a really good role model in my last few months here um, and while it is probably interesting to see someone you know start it's within within the span of a week you know make 62 and a half percent on one account, a live account with uh, no losing days, not one single losing day. And I can say that, and you can all know that what I'm saying here is illegal if it's not true. It's absolutely 100% certain. Uh, the reason why I, I did it was number one, to show my son that he doesn't need to swing for the fences all the time, just to go in and take you know, singles. Don't try to do the whole full range of the day or the, even the entire session, but to take small little pieces. And, and you're probably wondering, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the types of setups, what, what am I taking? Uh, well, I was limiting it just to silver bullets and I did two setups for the 2022 model. That's it. And the 2022 model was to show my youngest son and then all the other setups were just predominantly silver bullets or variants of a silver bullet within its scope of 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. All New York local time. So I, I did make a mistake yesterday, by the way, and I want to make that known to you. The uh, My youngest, I was going to transition from the actual live AMP account with real money. I wanted to go over to a paper trading account on TradingView and showing something. And I set the the idea of using over leveraged, you know, doing too many contracts at one time. Cause he was asking, okay, dad, if you if you made that with three contracts, what would you do if you had five more? I was like, okay, well, let me, let, let me show you. And I walked away from the terminal, came back with a drink and I had thought I already un, you know, logged off of AMP. So I actually went in and did a trade to show him. But as soon as I put the trade on, it was eight contracts with AMP and I heard it and closed it out. So the only thing that happened was I paid commission on eight contracts, which is a little annoying, but uh, it was the actual same fill. So I told him, I said, this is why you can't do these things distracted. So I explained to him, I said, listen, when you do things like this, you have to be 100% focused and daddy needs to have no distractions whatsoever. Like I can't have someone talking to me, but I can do that while I'm in a, a paper trading account showing them, showing you because it's, it's not requiring me to be as precise as I need to be as a human being that has a lot of OCD issues. If I'm trading with a real account with real money, I have to be dialed in. Otherwise I'm gambling. That's my, that's my perception of it. Making mistakes as soon as you get into it. Okay, as soon as you get into it, and don't worry, I'm going to show you my balance, and there will be no trades taken today. 
um, I'll show you a login in the whole business. I said forty thousand two hundred dollars. So when you're trading, whether you take a trade setup that you know deep down in your heart is not accurate or associated with any model that you're trying to trade, like you feel impulsive. As soon as you enter that trade, if you know that that's bothering you, it's underneath the surface that you know what you just did has nothing to do with what it is you're trying to trade with, immediately get out of the trade. Don't see what will happen and hope it's in, in the positive for you. Because many times you're not going to observe the warning signs and act on it and get out before the real pain comes. So what I was going to do was I was going to teach my youngest son how to navigate if you were to over leverage and how hard it would be to split that in half and split that in half if you were trying to make it back. Well, long story short, I was given another opportunity to teach something that's going to happen to you. You know, I've been doing this for a very long time. And I thought for sure I logged out of the AMP account. And I thought I went into the paper trading account on TradingView and it was still in the AMP account. So when I put that, when I execute that order, as soon as I hit it, I realized I was like, oh, this I'm still in AMP. Let me just go ahead and close it immediately. I was expecting to you know, pay something like a half a point, you know, three quarters of a point and have a loss. But I don't have a loss to show you that. It was just me getting in. Realizing I made the error of doing it with a live account when I'm me trying to show something in a paper trading account, and my execution was the exact same price, but it's still a commission cost for not being focused, for not being organized, and allowing um, an impulsive thing to hurry up and say, "Okay, well, my son's act asking about this, so let me go in and and show him something right away." I went over and got myself a drink so that way I could talk a lot. <laughs> I don't just talk to you all a lot; I talk to them too. And they squirm, just like some of you squirm. They, they just want to you know, get through it. But sometimes you just can't get through it faster and retain what it is that's required. But before I go any further, I did send you a, a chart. And before the non-farm payroll numbers, you can see we hit that little fair value gap. I was annotating that. What I'm looking for is, does it, willing, does it show a willingness to want to drop from there and go for the sell side? On the left-hand side of the chart that I just tweeted, uh, that's the US 100. That's for the folks that don't have access to futures contracts or to, to be able to trade it or have live data. Uh, that way you can see in comparing contrast what live data looks like in the futures contract for NASDAQ. And no, I'm not going to look at other markets, so please don't ask me. I'm not trying to be rude, but I want to know, does it show a willingness to drop from there? Now, it might show a little bit of excitement beyond that, okay, and go higher. I'm not interested in that. I just want to see, does it want to move from that fair value gap to the sell side? So 15,326 for US 100 or 15,411 for NQ's futures contract. I am not trading it. I'm not saying that you should trade it. Please don't do it, okay? But what I do is I sit down on non-farm payroll Fridays and I look at what two price points am I interested in? And then I study how price delivers from them or doesn't respect them at all. And the days that it doesn't respect it, I don't have any kind of regret. I don't have any pain. I don't have a losing trade to say, oh, you know, this is something I should have never done. And I'm not trying to entice you to do it either. Perfect example right here. So we went up a little bit higher. There's a little bit of a larger fair value gap. If you look at the, the NQ, the chart on the right-hand side, uh, that would be your 645. This is all 15-minute chart based, by the way. Why am I looking at a 15-minute chart? You're probably wondering. Uh, you want to have a little bit larger time frame and perspective because the market's going to seek liquidity or inefficiencies outside the scope of a one and five minute chart. So a bellwether time frame for me is like the 15 minute chart. So I like to look at those a little bit higher time frame. And it's not a higher time frame in, in the grand scheme of things. It's still an intraday chart. But that 645 candle for both US 100 and NASDAQ, both of them, you want to highlight that as well. So again, my interest is, does it want to go and seek that sell side down there at uh, the two respective lower lows made at uh, 4 p.m. yesterday? And if it was to do that, does it accelerate and reach for the lows that were formed at the 3.30 a.m. 
Thursday lows. So that that's my that's my whole focus today. Observing, studying, and there's some of you that are brand new, or or maybe you're action hounds. You're thinking, well, you know, why won't you take the trade? Why won't you do that? Because it would be against everything in my being. <laughs> because I hurt myself a lot over the years trading this thing. And what you might think you see in price action, uh, they'll intervene and run completely opposite to what you would reasonably expect, or won't respect any of the PD arrays and just go and do something completely unexpected. And because I hurt myself financially on this very particular day, early on in my career, I've learned to respect it and not expect, I don't expect to be precise on a day like this. I guess that's the easiest way of saying it. And, and it's because there's some days where I will not have the advantage. Authorship, you know, put that aside on this day, because if someone can go in there and turn the dials, and move things outside the the parameters that would be reasonable or or typical you stand no real well probability of being accurate so why would i want to why would i want to encourage my students to go in here and have a laboratory experiment with real risk it, it flies in the face of everything that i am as a mentor and it literally would be doing the opposite of what i've learned painful lessons from early on in my career. So much like you've seen a few times this year with the CPI number, whenever the CPI comes out, I always try to share with you up front what I believe done to my head, what do I think might happen? And there's been, I think only one time I got it right. But apart from that, it was incorrect. And that was the point. The point was to show you the reason why you don't want to stand in front of these types of reports is, even who I am and the experience I have and what I believe is true about the marketplaces, that's not holding any advantage on these types of days. Like it, it can humble you. It's humbled me and I'm trying to teach you by example, leading you by example, to respect the measure of risk and uncertainty that these types of days come with. So, so far we're looking at it. It looks like it's done the job of reaching up into that higher 645 uh, fair value gap for both the US 100 and the NASDAQ. So I wanna see, does it accelerate with a great deal of speed below the low formed at 745 AM? And we're still looking at a 15 minute time frame. You should have did this on a live stream ICT. No, I shouldn't. Cause if I go on there, I'll spend a lot more time than I wanna do here. I know I won't spend as much time. And uh, you're thinking, oh, here we go. He's going to be three hours now. And every time he says that, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have enough uh, gas in the tank for this type of day. All right, so we'll watch and see how, if at all, if we accelerate through that low at 7:45 New York local time. If you're on Trading View, as you should be following. Your time setting should be set to UTC negative four. Okay, so that's going to be New York local time. And if you have that time setting, we're watching and observing the 7.45 a.m. That low, does it want to gravitate to that low and below it and reach into the liquidity that rests below the 6.45 a.m. low? If it trades above the high that was formed on the candle lowering right now, then the buy side on NASDAQ futures at 15,560, that's likely in contention. So it might reach up there if it takes out the 15. That's how I view this. But I'm more interested in see, does it draw to the sell side? If it does draw to the sell side, and what that means is I wanna measure, does it have a willingness to wanna get down into the lows on the third? or yesterday at 3.30 a.m. So far, it's rather uh, quiet for a non-farm payroll. You can see we have so far been respecting the WIC consequent encroachment for chant right now of the 7.45 low. So on a 50 minute time frame, that candlestick that has the tail beneath it, we're wiping that out right now, running for the low. I would want to see speed and acceleration through that 745 low like that.
Now the up close candle, if you put your cursor on your computer at the 8.15 a.m., 15 minute candlestick, we do not wanna see at this point, we don't wanna see half of that candlestick have a, a move beyond that to the upside. That would be counterproductive to what we would expect to see in price action. And there you go. Happened on your chart just like we were expecting. Now you're probably wondering, well, you know, why didn't you take that trade? Because again, just because I can be right, just because it might follow my scripts, doesn't mean that I'm willing to go in there and risk real money on a day that I know that they're really interested in manipulating, taking price to a specific price level or beyond a price level that would make absolutely zero sense at the time looking at the chart. So I can be fooled. I can be tricked into following something that would otherwise be exactly as it should be. But the market will come in and do something entirely different and then run for an opposing liquidity or run beyond an inefficiency that I thought would be respected and it not deliver as I was expecting in, in that monetary loss, it would eat at me. The money is, is irrelevant. It's not, that's not going to be the factor. The factor is, is I've learned the lesson not to touch this. I, I treat it like a rattlesnake. Yeah, I see it. I know it's there. I know it might do a lot of things that I could go in there and, and make money with. But selling drugs, you can make money with that too. I'm not in a hurry to get there and start slinging rock. <laughs> okay. So it's a matter of, you know, principle. I know I can do certain things, but I also know my limitations. And I know this is a day like CPI and FOMC, those types of things are like kryptonite. I have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait and see, do things really have an advantage for you? And it's going to be the days that are not like these. And if you can't be content with that, there's something underlyingly wrong with you much like it was for me. And it was being a new trader, being someone that was interested in trying to make a lot of money real fast because I saw the volatility that these types of days would present and create. By the way, I would be done. So that, that would be, this would be my morning. So if this, for instance, if this was not a non-farm payroll Friday and say it was something, you know, some run of the mill trading day, medium impact news driver or regular uh, red news driver, but not non-farm payroll, not CPI, not a rate announcement. I would have taken the trade. And if I would have taken a loss, I would have been content with, okay, I did something wrong. I'll come back later in the day and get it. I saw a question, and I don't recall if it was on Twitter now or if it was on my comments in my videos. And yes, I see all of your comments on the videos that had the comment section open. Uh, you look like you're the only one putting a comment there because it'll show up on yours. I have them set to review because I, there's a lot of people that are soliciting crypto things and stuff. I'm not into crypto. And whether your comment's good or bad, I see them. But the uh, one of the questions was, can you trade or, or can I trade uh, non from payroll after the morning session and trade the afternoon? Um, it, you can, but in my experience, it's better not to, okay? Um, there's gonna be lots of uh, examples someone can reach back to and say, well, you know, it did this this time and ICT said, don't do it. You would have missed that. Well, there's, you know, you're missing the move of the CPI number two, unless you're ahead of it. You're missing the rate announcement, you know, movement, unless you're ahead of it. So uh, that, that, our, that argument is uh, a moot point. It doesn't, it doesn't hold water. That, that, that dog does not hunt basically. So, these straw man arguments that you're considering that someone might pose to you, or maybe you've done it yourself, you know, you have to put that aside and you have to be very mature about handling the risk, handling the opportunities and navigating this marketplace where you don't want to get in there just to find out that you did something you shouldn't have done. That's an experience that you, you're trying to, hopefully, if you're listening to me, you're trying to spare yourself that experience. You don't need to have that experience where you where you lose monetarily and hurt yourself psychologically and financially, learning a lesson that will scar you 
and hold you back in your growth. It'll be a, it'll be like a rock in your shoe. If you do the things I tell you not to do and it hurts you, whether you want to admit it or not, you're going to want to blame me. You're going to find some way to blame me because it's easier to do that than to say, you know what? He did tell me not to do this and I didn't listen. But his methods should have worked here because, no, if I'm telling you I'm not touching it, what makes you think that you're going to be a better artist behind doing all that? You're not. So it's good advice. It's good medicine. I know it's bitter sometimes, and you don't want to swallow it, but swallow you shall, and it'll make you better. You can't, you can't appreciate following good advice and it not hurting you over and over and over again when you otherwise would have done something impulsively until you follow that good logic and that good advice. And that will encourage you. That's my that's my hope and my, my prayer that you, it helps you forge some measure of discipline, uh, self-control, which are two very, very important, very much lacking characteristics of today's type of new trader everything's like i'm i got to get in right now and the fear of missing out and the fomo you know uh, the way you master that and you get over it is to have a well-rounded understanding of price action understand who you are as the person that way you know that this is what my impulses are this is what makes me tick. This is what gets me going. This is, this is what makes me pursue opportunity. When I see the market do this, I'm interested. I'm going to go after it and chase it like a cheetah. But you have to also understand what those impulses are going to be that cause you to recklessly plunge in. And it may be some kind of stimuli that's instigated by something on social media, whether you feel like you have to defend yourself or what you're learning or me, which you don't need to ever do that. Or you want to measure up to some measure of external prowess, whether it be another methodology, um, some other else in social media, a YouTuber, a, a, someone in a, in a competition or a trading you know, leaderboard in these funded accounts. Uh, companies are they're doing those, which I think that's great. But don't be don't be tricked into thinking that you have to do that type of stuff to equate to being good. Like being number one on a leaderboard on a funded account, you know, measuring stick. Making money is progress. If you've gotten good at doing this and you want to be able to climb to those heights to do those other things, then that's great. I love seeing that. But I don't want all of you to look at what I've done here with this live account. Because, I, yeah, I shared a, uh, this is all on the same topic, so I'm not going off. I'm not veering off. A year and a half ago, two years ago, I showed a, uh, a TD Ameritrade account. A young lady on YouTube basically lumped me in with a bunch of other frauds and uh, said that, hey, you know, this guy here, he doesn't ever trade, he trades with a demo account. He would never go into a reputable broker like TD Ameritrade. Well, I went out there and did TD Ameritrade, and I flipped a quarter and just showed a lot of examples of just managing money correctly. And you can make money. I made over 100%, you know, in less than five weeks or so with that real broker. And I taught a lot of lessons in that. And I shared, I went into the account, showed the whole thing. It's on my YouTube channel. You can look at it. But uh, I showed every example, showed lots of losing trades, showed how I came back from 30% drawdown in one day. I had students that were asking me, what would you do if you did this? What would you do? These are paid students. So I'm not obligated to any of you that are listening to me on Twitter. I'm not obligated to any of you that listen to me on YouTube. I do that because I'm passionate. I want to help all of you. But I have students that were asking me, listen, this is what I keep encountering. Can you show me with a live account what would be necessary for this to be rectified? How do you mitigate all these periods of drawdown? How do you overcome the losing trade day? How do you fix all that stuff? And that's exactly what I was doing. So I killed two birds with one stone. And there are people out there that look at it and say, well, there's, this guy doesn't have any precision. Look at this. I mean, look at, look at all these trades. 
Okay, that's not what we see on this. When the only thing was, is I was answering that lady at the time and the people that kept bringing up her video. Well, she's no longer on YouTube, <laughs> so whatever. But uh, to answer the other folks that came to that series of, uh, I don't know, if, I don't know how many, I think it's one video. I got to check it. I don't know how many videos it was, but it was basically you know, me showing me three months worth of activity. This is what you look for. This is what you fix. And you're not privy to those conversations, but some folks looked at that and said, well, this isn't showing any precision. There's a lot of losing days. So recently there was a, a lot of chit chat again from an upcoming uh, YouTuber and they beat the same drum. You never see him trade with a live account. You never see IC trade with mo real money. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. So because I have a lot of new students that are coming to me and I'm so thankful that all of you are interested in my life's work. Uh, we're at 734,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. I mean, at that pace, I'm doing 50,000 plus new subscribers per month. I'll, I'll probably be at a million by Christmas at this pace. Like the, the way it's growing, it's, it's, that's pretty crazy, but uh, it's very intimidating. Let me tell you that. Like it's, when I think about how many people are interested, it makes me much more careful about what I'm saying. You probably hear it today. Um, Cause I, I saw that number before I logged into this Twitter space, but the, uh, the idea of showing someone, cause I, you see me showing examples. Okay. And it's easy for someone to say, oh, well, he's cherry picked that. And when you show your, uh, your results and you share it on social media, they're going to say the same thing about you. Okay. And while I don't really care what other people that have no real interest in what it is that I do or try to learn from me, if they just want to come in and, and do their little one liners and try to get attention or whatever, get a rise out of me, I get that. I understand. But I'm not losing any sleep over that. But here's what will bother me. This is what will bother me. When a student of mine or a new viewer or reader comes to me and says, hey, you know, I'm I'm looking at your content. I feel like this is something that I would be really interested in. But do you trade with real money? Because I saw this person. I saw this person's video. I see these people on Reddit say this and that and the other thing about you. And they're help, they're hung up. They're sitting on the fence. And that's the person I'm talking to. When I'm addressing certain things, like some of you right now are hissing and moaning because I'm talking about this, but it's important to me. If I'm going to be an educator, if I'm going to be a mentor, if I'm trying to guide you to have the right mindset, all of you are at different levels of your understanding with what it is I've taught and, or know me better than the newer folks. And the newer folks have a whole lot of content to wade through before they get to me saying things like this, where it, I'm explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I'm not, I'm not reacting to everybody, but I am reacting to people that show a sincere interest in wanting to learn it. So when someone says to me, hey, you know, you show demo trades all the time and you never show a losing day. If I have a losing day, you'll see it. So to show you that this is the same thing that I do with real money, I put $25,000 into an AMP account a little bit over a week ago. I have zero losing days, folks. OK, CFTC, if you're listening, OK, it's zero losing days. OK, period. I'm not mimicking someone and pretending to be something I'm not. I am who I am. But I'm also being very cautious not to run this thing up just because I want to smear and just twist the knife. And three people out there that are just trying to make a career on the fact that they can talk trash about me, but they can't trade well themselves. I want to show you, and I think I have, and I'm not done, but I've shown you that that leaderboard over there on the Robbins trading is a joke. I told you all I could win that in a week. I've already climbed to the height of the, the Global Cup, and those folks over there have been working since June. I'm at plus 60% in five trading days, no losing days, and I'm not even pushing it. I'm not trading every session. I'm taking one trade, except for the other day where I took two, just to bump me up to get me to uh, the 40,000 mark because it was bothering me. <laughs> it was irking me. 
But other than that, I think that those are realistic results. And you're probably questioning, you know, what is it that you're risking ICT? Because it sounds like you're risking a whole lot. I'm actually not. Now, when I say it's not to me, it's not to me. But you all think that 2% is what everybody should risk. And I teach my student, go back to your 645, 15 minute candlestick, that fair value gap, extend that to the right. If it touches that, we would want to see if it wants to find some respect on that level and run for the 15,560 buy side. And for the US 100, uh, that buy side that's resting at the 145 AM candle, uh, that high comes in at 15,473. And that's where your buy side is. So that's where the draw on liquidity is right now. But the, uh, I lost my train of thought. Too many things at one time. That's why I focus on one market. But the uh, the results that I'm showing, I don't want you to think that you have to have those kind of results or you're not good as a student of mine or a good trader. And I don't want to give the impression that you should use the same risk model that I have. I'm a little bit better than the average person. So because of that, I know, even if I mess it up as a human being, like I mentioned yesterday, you know, I, I did something that was silly of me, but it was like an $80, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like $9.99, you know, round turn or whatever, with all the fees that they add on it at AMP. I, I don't know. I got to double check that. But uh, I don't really care about the commissions. And a lot of people get freaked out about commission costs and things. Um, you, you're going to pay something no matter what you do, who you trade with. Every broker is going to have its own little things. I'm not introducing broker for AMP. Uh, my son opened up an account with them, I don't know, about two years ago or something like that. And uh, there was an issue that came up and they, they rectified it. They fixed it. Um, I know that there are a lot of you that are trading with funded accounts and, and whatnot, and there seems to be a delay on trading view. Um, there is absolutely zero, absolutely no delay at all, not one bit of delay when I'm trading and putting these orders in. It's immediate execution. There's no delay. There's none of that going on. So if you're doing things like with Tradeovate or if you're using another broker, um, even with like when you're paper trading with trading view. I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's because they have so many people paper trading that it's probably a drain on their network and, and their servers. But I have not, and my son has not experienced any lagging at all with live executions through AMP. I'm not an introducing broker. I don't want you going out there, open up an account with them. I get nothing at all from me mentioning it, but people ask me, who am I trading you know, live with right now the executions i'm showing right now are, are being cleared that means they're they're passing through the broker that's handling those transactions for me is amp futures so i don't have things to say that would say this is a bad broker but i'm not trying to tell you to go with them so that way you can understand where i'm at okay so i'm not trying to entice any of you to open an account with them i have no affiliations with anyone so my opinion is shared with you, I hope you can appreciate that this is my unadulterated, 100% honest experience. I like TradingView. I have used, my son has used AMP. I see no fault with them. But you're going to eventually have an issue with everyone. It's, just, it's life, folks. But I don't want you to look at my trades between 1.5% up to 3.5% risk. Oh, three and a half percent. If you're new and you hear that, you're thinking, man, this is too much risk. You're going to crash and burn. No, I could do 5% every single trade. I'm not going to blow the account. I know what I'm doing. But as an average pool of, of going and putting a trade on, I'm trying to hit numbers. I'm not trying to do crazy numbers. And that 62% or whatever it is in five days, that's literally nothing. For me, it's nothing. It's nothing. I could sit here all day long, and this is that part that sounds like bragging, but it's for the people that ask this, okay? I could sit here 
I could sit here all day long and trade the London session, take a nap, get up, trade a New York session, trade the lunch, trade the afternoon session, literally, and make 100% every single day, every single day, over and over and over and over again. I can do that, but it's draining. It's very, very draining. I will have losing trades. I, that bothers me. <laughs> that gets under my skin. That invites the old 20-year-old Michael to come out, and I relive all that stuff like a flashback, and it causes me regret. I don't, I don't have to operate like that. You don't need to have to operate like that. So when I teach and I tell you where my weaknesses are, that's a strength for you. You're learning from somebody that can do it. And just because, just because I teach in a demo or a paper trading account for protection, there's no way I can get in trouble with what I'm showing you with AMP. There's no way. Because number one, I'm not telling you in advance because why am I not telling you what trades they are? I'm not hiding them for sake of this or that. I'm telling you, I'm not using my following because I have people now starting the whole, oh, he's got a lot of followers. He's doing the pump and dump. He's putting his trade on, he's front running. And then when it starts moving because everybody else is gonna do it behind him, then he gets out. Nope, can't do that, can you? Because none of you knew what I was doing. Everything that I do is calculated, everything. There's absolutely zero excuses for anybody now this year. I've canceled all of it. That Mickey Mouse Robins Cup World Cup leaderboard, that is literally a long weekend for me. It's over. That's nothing. That's why these folks will not step. I'm showing them politely. This is me being kind. And you would have got slapped around. Slapped all around. Without even trying, with just two of the free models that I taught on YouTube, using three trades with three and a half percent risk, and everything else was two and a half to two and a quarter percent. That's what I was risking. Is that a lot? For some of you, yes, yeah, a lot. But you were probably expecting 10% risk, 12%, 15% risk, 30% of the account. No. No. I sit down, I write down, okay, this is what I want to make in this day. This is what I want to make by this end of that week. And come non-farm payroll Friday week, I want to have $40,000. Well, I'm over that by $200. So I beat my goal by 200 bucks. Doing it at a pace where I believe a student with 18 months experience, I believe, now this isn't the, the enticement for you to go out there and try to prove it to me or anyone else or yourself, but I believe that a student that has done everything that I told them to, to study and focus and, and concern themselves with most and refrain from the things I tell you to refrain from, you can duplicate what I just did. You don't need to know my trades. You don't need to know when I'm getting into a trade. You don't need to know the draw on liquidity. It means you know everything that is pertinent to you as the trader, and you found your model. Everything at that point, folks, is just math. It's just math. That's all it is. I have a cookie cutter. I have lots of cookie cutters. I have 81 cookie cutters. When I look at price, I'm seeing what kind of dough I have to work with that day. Whatever that dough is, that session, that trading day, that weekly range, whatever it is, my mind immediately jumps to, okay, this is appropriate for this model, that model, but I can't use that one, that one. So I can't throw all that stuff out. All of that's happening in, in a few moments or moments looking at the chart. And I know some of you, I, I read this tweet earlier before I got on here. Can I go over what it is that I go through and, and try to you know, find trade setups and what cancels out other ideas? That's very, very, that was, that has been the hardest thing for me to try to condense 30 years of doing this. Like, I, I can't, I can't dilute 30 years of sorting out certain things to go to this thing over everything else. Because to do that, you need to know everything else and why it's not pertinent to that, that current circumstance. So the have it your way right now crowd is never fully satisfied with me. And they get mad because I physically and humanly can't do what they're asking me to do by condensing 30 years. 
because how can I think about it? Take, take, take trading as the subject matter out of the equation, whatever it is. If it took 30 years for me to get the level of experience I have, how can I succinctly and in a condensed manner take every possible conceived question, strip it down to a, a one paragraph or a tweet response or a, or a video and satisfy every subtle question, nuance, inquiry that would ever be associated with that, that, that questioning and, and, or frame of mind. It's impossible. And, and I, it literally plagues me. When I first came out, I didn't really fully anticipate this level of you know, concern I would have over it. But because I want, I want to make sure you have it, I want to make sure that you understand me and understand what it is that you should be doing. I'm up against a wall with limitations as a human. Like I can't get past a certain measure of what you want me to do. I can't do that. I don't have a way of diluting it. Like I said, from take, take all this experience and say, this, 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 this is the short, straight answer to what you're asking for. Because you have to understand everything else and what those individual components require or demand of me or you as the trader and inside the marketplace are these signatures in play. If they're not there or if they are there, I have to make a lot of different decisions. And it's based on what I have right there in front of me in the charts and the 30 years behind me in the terms of experience. So it would be very hard for me and anyone, and anybody, it would be hard for them to try to answer some of the questions or expectations that I have from new viewers or new students. But uh, this past week, you know, I, I just wanted to sit down politely, okay? And some joker jerked me out of my you know, comfort zone. And I wasn't trying to brag, but it, it, it just pisses me off when I see jokers out there literally clowning around, whether they're trying to get a rise out of me or if they really believe that I can't trade, if they really believe that, how how can you argue the fact that these concepts aren't effective, accurate? I call things, the market delivers. I execute on them with a the demo, it works. And then I've been very, very patient with a lot of folks having their fun. But at some point, you know, if this is my last year, I had to sit down and explain to everyone, this is what it looks like. This is, this is what it looks like when you go in there and you know that you're going to make money. When I say you can't make money every single day, I'm talking to you in your limited capacity right now as a, as a brand new student. If you've been with me for two years or so, you're brand new. You're still brand new. And there's nothing wrong with it. Don't take that as me talking down to you or, or being uh, ignorant. And it's not narcissism, it's not arrogance. You're so new, you haven't really, really figured it out for yourself yet. You just found your groove. But when I tell you, you can't be profitable every single day, I want you to have that in mind so that way you don't insist upon being profitable in the beginning every single day because you're not going to be. And if you think that I've taught that you should have that mindset early on, and you can't hit that mark, guess what it does? It, it completely destabilizes the growth pattern and curve that you're on. It becomes a roller coaster ride, and you don't want that. I'm trying to be a, a mentor or a teacher that guides you with all the right information, but makes you aware along the way, here, this right here will hurt you. Don't touch it. Oh, by the way, don't step there because that's a snare. Oh, don't, don't, don't go down. Don't even look down there because that lion will see you staring at it as a means of challenging it. And you're gonna to try to do something you're not ready for, fight a lion or fight a bear. Okay, and some of you don't wanna listen. And my children don't wanna listen. It's human nature. That's why when I teach, I teach repetitively. Oh, this guy says the same thing over and over again. When you do that in my comment section, I don't ever see your comments ever again. So if you ever want me to see your comments, if you're rude, if you're an asshole, um, just know that I'm the only one that sees that. And it's easy for me to say, okay, well, you're you're not here to learn. See ya. Enjoy working for the rest of your life. And then I don't see you no more. So 
And yes, I do get a handful of those people. It's the same sock puppet accounts. <laughs> it's what it is. But hopefully you've seen, you know, with a real account, that's a really good living wage. Now, I know right away somebody, oh, see, he got lucky for a week. He's beating his chest. We still have some year left, okay? I went out with the intention to show everybody that listens to these yahoos that these things work in real accounts too. It's not limited to demo. Okay, demo is just a really wonderful learning environment. It, you can't build up. Well, some of you do. <laughs> you, you should not be building up this overconfidence or fear, whether you have a profitable or unprofitable outcome. What you're supposed to be doing with a paper trading account or a demo account is understanding you more than the results in the monetary sense in the trades. I'm going to say that again because you didn't get it. When you're using a demo, when you're using paper trading, okay, what you're really studying there is how you, the operator, the person that's deciding to push that button, how do you feel while that trade is panning out? Observing, do you feel any change psychologically, emotionally? Do you feel like you're absolutely correct and it's going to go right where you want it to go? Or are you now thinking this is probably not going to pan out, but it's a demo. Let me just close it or not close it. These are all things that you need to be observing and journaling that. I promise you, if you look at your demo trading like that, you're taking your, your eye off of the money because let's just make it plain and simple. If you're doing everything correct, correct and right, the money will work itself out. If you're worrying about all the right things, which is do you see everything in price action suggesting that you're on the right side of the marketplace? If you're just watching that little profit and loss button going up and down every little tick in mark-to-market movement, you are not observing price. You're conditioning yourself to be reactive and responsive to equity price swings. That is what every failed trader or gambler does. That thing should not even be on your charts. The only reason why I put it there is because people are fascinated and they love to see that. But my examples are just to show you I know how to execute. I know exactly where to get in. I know where to place my stop losses. And if you look at the comment sections all the time when I share them, that's the number one comment thing now. That stop loss. Bro, how are you doing that? Everything that I'm teaching you tells me that this is the right place to put that stop loss. See, when you look at price, when you're when you're brand new, okay, or maybe you're in another school of thought and you use a different methodology in your trading. And whatever it is that you come to except as a stop loss. You know, I don't just go above the recent high or below a recent low. I'm using three PD arrays, okay? Because if I'm in a trade and I see that I've already bumped through one of them, now I have two PD arrays. Once I bump through one of them and the other one's in real close proximity, I'm gonna hover over top of that little X to close the trade out. Now, I don't do that with my live account. I have it in the bottom box. Like, if, for instance, if you open up Trading View and you tap the, uh, for instance, I'm, I, I'm doing it now as I'm talking to you. So, AMP Live is the brokerage. If I tap that on the lower left hand corner of Trading View, whatever your brokerage firm is, or if it's paper trading when you're using a demo, if you tap that, that box that opens up and you go to positions, you can close it out on the right lower uh, corner just by clicking the X and then it'll close your trade out. So, if I'm looking at a trade, and I've already seen a, a, a retracement against me, and it's pulling up into, and it's like, for instance, I'm short, okay? And then I have three specific PD arrays, three, three things, three levels, three very specific price levels, not zones, very specific price levels. If one of them is breached, and the next one, the second one of the three, is in close proximity to where the market is right now, I'm going to hover over top that close button. Because if that second one is going, and if I don't have all the things in my repertoire saying that this is still good, 
I want to close the trade out because what I'm then doing is spending mental capital on a trade that may not even be worth my time. So I'll either stop the trade before it takes my full stop, or if it's a position where I've pyramided in and I have open profit, I just won't let them erode into more of the open profit and I'll just close it. So all those things, what I just said there, it may seem like, oh, that's easy. I'm glad you shared that ICT, but you don't realize that all the other things that are required for me to feel comfortable with that very thing. You're hearing me say those words, and because you have a respect for me, you're thinking, okay, that's all I needed to hear. Now, that's it. That's a gem. That's you know, I understand that. You don't understand what I just said. I promise you that. You don't understand what I just told you because you have to go through other things to fully understand and appreciate what would constitute me trusting or negating the whole plan of that trade and killing it and aborting it right then and there. It requires other lessons and other things to understand. It's so multifaceted. It's not easy for me to say this, 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 and it, it's, it fits every scenario. It's not like a silver bullet where between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, there's a gap going to be retraded to. And if you're bearish, if it trades up into it, you can be short and there it is. It, it's it's not that simple for everything. You know, the the real technical stuff, I don't think I'm equipped really <laughs> to teach it because many of you are struggling with some of the simplest things. And it hurts me because I can't overcome that. Like I, I have literally lost sleep this year and last worrying about a handful of you that are very very sincere and you want to learn this and you keep coming back to the same things and, and, and my ability to teach on that very subject has been exhausted I, I can't go beyond what i've already shared and some of you just can't find more progress and in those instances i will readily concede that i have failed as a mentor for that very thing and i i wish i couldn't fail in this area i wish i was a way for me to get beyond that and i don't know how to do it like i don't know how to do that so i take what it is i'm doing even though i'm doing it for free i care more about it than anybody else would i obsess about it because i want you to succeed i want my children that are hearing these to succeed number one for and foremost that's who i'm talking to but when there are real folks that are outside my dna my family and they're really trying their hardest to learn this. I'm trying. I am trying my best to try to bridge that gap. But I just, I don't know how to do it sometimes. Like, I don't know how to articulate it. And it's frustrating for me. So to inspire them and to inspire you all and also to cancel the whole idea that these jokers out there are trying to discourage you because they want you to listen to them. There, there's never been anybody that came out there and said, you know, hey, don't listen to this smart money concept stuff. ICT's full of hot air. He can't trade. If he did, he would show you. I don't need to show you. Like, I don't need to show you. I don't. I didn't need to go out there and put $25,000 in an AMP account. I didn't need to do that. I don't need the money. But I'm about to pay $68,000 for, uh, what is it, furnace, air conditioning, and air treatment system that's being installed upstairs and downstairs two four ton units and that installation all that for a house this size and everything that's being part of it is sixty eight thousand dollars so my lifestyle costs money demo doesn't do it <laughs> okay ad revenue with a daughter and my wife that blows through money that doesn't do it i have to make money i'm not selling mentorships i'm not going to sell you a mentorship but because people ask me or they say these things i'm not i'm not obligated to dance for that but when there are people that are genuinely concerned that hey you never show a losing trade yes i did go up there to td, TD ameritrade as a real account lots of losing trades and it still made 100 percent in less than five weeks or so 100 percent with lots of losing trades and to answer the folks that had a problem with that Said, oh, there's no precision there. He's losing this and losing that. Okay, no losing days. And 62%, five days. Top of the leaderboard in the World Cup. If I wanted to be there, Global Cup, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Global Cup. Then you look at these folks that are coming out there and they'll say this stuff. They'll 
They will do this to you, okay? No matter who you are, what you're doing, if you're doing something that is garnering attention from the masses or getting more attention than those people, if they're insecure or they're trying to sell something, they're going to come at you. And I've laughed at this stuff for a long time. And most people on social media don't have that thick skin. I'm not thin skinned. I'm easily distracted like a dog that sees a squirrel. I'm, I'm going to chase it. Not because I'm insecure, but I love it. <laughs> I really love it. I enjoy it. I've many times baited that whole thing because it, 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 it entertains me because I know they're absolutely never going to be on our level, never going to be here. And not one person, this is what I was going to say to you, not one person's ever came forward and tried to talk you away from learning how to do this and not have some kind of ulterior motive where they're selling something. It's always that way. Always. It's always been that way. There's never been someone come out there. Yeah, don't look, don't look at this ICT stuff. And they don't have anything to sell or anything like that. It's never been the case. So really, what are you doing? You're being sold. Okay. You're being sold and convinced to look somewhere else other than this. When I brought the goods, I have students that are making fortunes with real money, both live accounts and or through funded accounts and companies that are all around the world. Not just one company. I have no affiliation with none of them. I told you, I told you last year I was bringing the receipts. I have created monsters. I'm creating a monster in you. You just have to stop fighting it. At some point, at some point, it's going to take over you. And you got to give in to it. Let it happen. Don't worry about what other people should see in you by now. You've been doing it this long. You should have been profitable. Forget all that. Stop letting other people put the expectations on you you should be meeting. You're growing at your pace. You owe nobody an explanation for how long it took for you. You know, you owe no one an explanation on what you made or lost this week or last week. You, you don't owe that to anyone, not one person. And for folks that get out here and they feel like they have to do that or they can't be recognized, you're looking outside of yourself and that's your problem. When I was a young man and I was in my 20s, I needed to show that outwardly. Because I didn't have it in my personal family. Like I wasn't recognized as, as someone that was significant. My own parents didn't have anything to do with me. So I had a real chip on my shoulder. And some of you have that same type of thing, maybe from a different core reason or root cause. But you're doing that same thing and you're using social media to validate you. And as soon as you do that with trading and or your trading results or your growth as a trader, you are inviting chaos. You are inviting a level of difficulty that you cannot even imagine. It is so absolutely toxic to, to real growth, organic growth, something that if you weren't showing your results along the way with other people that can be critic criticizing or very highly critical of you, who don't even know who you really are, what was an inspiration for you to take the trade? What you felt while you're in a trade? Who has never shown you any kind of support, but you're inviting their opinion? Hey, I'm trying to make a go of this and the most difficult thing in the world up against the most brilliant minds and the corruption that's in this industry is unfathomable. And uh, you know, here's my progress. What do you think? Well, you're asking Twitter, Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, a, a, a swimming cesspool of failures. You think they're going to come to you and say, you know, keep going. boy, kiddo. Keep doing it. You're doing a great job. Don't lose sight of the goal. They're miserable. They're broke. You're talking to Carl. Carl, the brown noser. Okay. He can't trade. He's stuck right in that cubicle. And the best thing he can do is brown nose with the boss snitch on everything and make himself look good and get employee the, a week or month. Your whole mindset is to get away from that type of person. Isolate yourself from that. You need to be an island un, of, of in and of itself, apart from everyone and everything in this industry. That's what I did. That's what I tell you to do. 
while learning with me, it's important for you to have a hive mentality. What are we focusing on? What should we filter out? How should we conceive these trading ideas in our own models? All these things, that's a hive mentality. But I'm kicking you out of the nest in November. Whether you're ready to fly or not, daddy's booting your ass out of here. So you're going to know if you've done the right things. And if you haven't, you're going to have to do all that work by yourself. No encouragement. No Twitter spaces. None of that stuff. No tweets saying, hey, this is a non-farm payroll week. Don't trade past Wednesday's morning session. You should have known these things by now. And some of you aren't prepared for that. Many of you are. Many of you are going to rise up in this community, even in my absence, and you're going to be like pillars in this community and say, hey, this is what we should be doing. This, and, and you're going to flock to those types of people. And if they're the right type of person and they have all the things that were taught by me correctly and they're not leading you astray with other nonsense and bringing in this and bringing in that, they're going to be an asset to you. They will be an asset to you because some of you need that sense of community, but the goal is to not need it forever. That's the independent mindset that I'm trying to cultivate in all of you. Not a codependency with me or anyone else. Not a, I need a study partner. No, you don't. Your study partner is your journal. That's your proctor. A proctor is someone that's watching you while you're doing the test. You're not allowed to talk. The proctor is not going to guide you. They're there to make sure you're not cheating and you're following the rules. That's your journal. You have to give it permission to be that way. You have to give it permission to be demanding that you are accountable. And you should feel comfortable doing it with your journal because nobody else should be reading it. I appreciate the fact that some of you are doing amazing note taking. Some of you are very, very articulate in the way you, you capture your, your thoughts and your observations and charts much, much better than I do and highly organized. And that is amazing. I'm proud to see it. But, <laughs> but I think personally that if you're showing everything with your journal, you are not going to be using the journal in its highest capacity. Meaning you have to give yourself the environment, the arena for you to be honest with yourself, but also self-love, okay? And I'm not talking about masturbation, by the way. The idea of giving yourself positive self-talk when you do something incorrect or correct, not seeking some negative reinforcement or, oh, I effed that up. This is so, I was so stupid when I did this. You know, for instance, think about what I said yesterday. I made a mistake. I thought I had logged out of AMP before I went to go get my drink and talk to my son. And when I sat down, it was literally on the live account. And I thought I was going to put on something on a, a paper trading account. And it was in the live account. And I explained it to you. How did I say it? You know, I did something silly. Not, oh, what a moronic thing. It was so dumb of me. And then the little, the whole thing and experience of myself. That's what some of you think your journal is. You're not a drill sergeant in the Marines, okay? If you're treating your journal as the drill sergeant in your progress, what you're doing is you're saying that I need to get myself beaten into shape, broken first, then rebuilt in six weeks, basic training. Six weeks basic training and trading is failure. 100% of the time, it's failure. You have to counsel yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to remind yourself through positive reinforcements, always excluding any negative. I'm not saying that you can't observe and appreciate where you've done something incorrectly. It's the way you retain that observation in your journal. It's highly critical that you are so careful not to record 
any negative stimuli that would make you feel belittled, that would feel like abuse verbally or mentally to yourself and find the silver lining in everything. If you make a mistake, if you've done something incorrectly, say, I'm thankful that I have this opportunity opportunity to learn how to improve on this very thing. I have noticed this in my trading or my annotations in the journal for whatever amount of time that you may have you know, seen these things creeping in. Say, this is an area for me to spend more time studying how to mitigate these circumstances. What you have done is you've talked to your subconscious. If you would have put negative things in there that said, I keep messing it up. I'm never going to get this funded account passed. I'm never going to uh, be successful at this. I'm never going to learn how to trade. This is so hard. This is so difficult. This is more, more difficult than I ever thought. When you're putting that in your journal, you think that you did that and you let go of that. I read a, um, a tweet from somebody the other day. I didn't like it. I just, I, I didn't agree with it, but I didn't want to be off-putting by saying anything about it. But the guy was like, you know, I, I do my journal. I say where I messed up, I effed it all up, and I feel clean for the day. Now I'm good. Uh, no. What you don't realize is, is you're literally smashing your self-worth. You think that you're beating yourself into and cutting yourself out of granite like a, uh, like a Goggins type thing. Yeah. You know, uh, that guy that lost a lot of weight and he's he's always running and he's talking about you know you're you're a bitch you know you you, know, you got to get off the couch and just stop doing it. You, you can't you can't do that in this okay I promise you you can't do that here because this is so much different than just physical fitness and and losing weight. This is absolutely attacking who you are and how you think. And some of you might go, "Well, it's the same thing," and it's actually not. Because that man could have done all those things and never been recognized and never made money for having done so. But he would still feel good because he did what he was supposed to do. Okay, that's for him. Most people don't respond well to that type of stimuli. I'll be honest with you, okay? My disposition is this. If I would have been drafted, and there was concern about that when the Gulf War was going on because – uh, they said, look, if we need to, you know, we'll have to institute the draft. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that ain't going to work well for me because I don't like being told what to do. And you can say whatever you want to say, what I'm about to say. But if a man gets in my face and screams, you better do this, you better do that. I'm beating that guy's ass. I don't care how many stripes he has on his sleeve. I don't care if he can court martial me, put me in the, whatever. I'm beating that guy's ass. I'm not, I'm not an army guy, okay? I'm not a military guy. I don't like being told what to do. But I also know that there are people that are like me, or maybe not to that extreme, that won't respond well to recording negative observations in a journal and finding it fruitful or helpful. It would just be, this is a waste of time. All I'm doing is, is complaining into the journal. That's not what you're using a journal for, okay? That's not what you're, you're not to do that. You are to look at everything that you're doing as a learning experience, and it's always a good reason for it. And it's a skill set that you have to acquire. Nobody sits down and does a journal and says, you know, this, that, other thing, and it's a love story constantly. There's going to be plot twists in this book that you're writing. And the experiences you, that you garner from trading, market just opened up, I'm watching it. I want to see it buy side now on both uh, US 100 and NASDAQ. So you wanna have a, give me a second here. Have uh, on NASDAQ futures, uh, 15, 562 and a half, draw a line up there, there's your buy side. And on US 100, you wanna have 15,473.4, that's where your buy side is. Uh, they, on the 15 minute chart, there's really no inefficiencies except for the fair value gap. I told you at the 645 to have that on your chart and see if it wants to come down and to treat that as an inversion fair value gap. Uh, we've done so so far for um, for both US 100 and NASDAQ. So we'll see what we get here. But um, don't trade it, just observe it. 
but you don't want to be doing anything in your growth that would be viewed as argumentative with yourself or uh, condescending or judgmental in your journal. Like this is why it needs to be personal and private. And if you share these things publicly, you're inviting people to be critical of you. And you might say, oh, it doesn't bother me. It does bother you. It, it, it would bother anyone. If it's enough time being done to you, it will have an impact on you. And then you'll be thinking about, oh, I'm, I want to write this in my journal. And I want to record this. But that person or these people that have said this in the past about other things, how would they think about this if I share? See, right away, you've down, you've messed it up. You can't be open and honest with yourself in your journal when you've invited it to be a third party conversation. It's not. It's not a third party conversation. It's not meant to be shared with me. It's not meant to be shared with your spouse, your significant other, your children, nothing. It's just you having a conversation with your future self. That's who you're talking to. You're encouraging that future trader along the way you're coaching him you're coaching her you're doing those things to constantly give yourself the inspiration to stick to this because there's no better cheerleader than yourself equally so and much more there's nobody more formidable that's going to prevent you from succeeding in this than you there ain't a troll out there that can trade better than me. There ain't one person out there that says anything negative about me can do better than me. They're all broke compared to me. None of that stuff bothers me. None of that stuff should bother you. But some of you will lie to yourself and say, it, it doesn't really bother me when you know it does. So don't give them the opportunity to come into the conversation with your future self. These people are miserable. Why would you want them to be a part of your, your, your growth? They're not even speed bumps. Like they're, they're, they're nothing. They're along the path. Like I said, don't, don't spend any time with that. Don't look over here and don't even pay attention to that. That's a waste of time. Just keep your eyes going forward and walk carefully. That's how you navigate it. You don't get caught up in all the drama. Truth be told, I kind of like the drama. <laughs> I kind of like it because all it does is shows me who the weak links are. Where's the weak ones out there? Because they're going to talk the most. None of them can do anything to me. Not one thing. They can't do anything to me. They've advertised for my YouTube channel more than I did. But maybe you don't have that type of personality where you can thrive in that chaos and drama and it doesn't hold you back. It kind of entertains you. Maybe it's something that would detract or distract or take you away from the things that you should be focusing on. Well, if you know that's the case, don't invite other people to read your journal. If you're absolutely you know, steadfast and no matter what you do, you're going to be honest in your journal and you know, you know yourself. I don't know you. you nobody else knows you better than you do. But these ideas of opening up to it's not like a, it's not like an AA meeting, okay? It's not Alcoholics Anonymous where you just tell everybody what you're feeling at the time and you feel like you have to do that to keep yourself sober. Like, don't treat your journal like that and invite other people to your AA meeting. Don't do that. Keep everything personal and private because when you do make a mistake. You won't feel uncomfortable. The US 100 just delivered like we were expecting, and so did the NASDAQ. So there's another one for you, the log books for you. Inversion fair value gap, post, non farm payroll, and 930 opening. So about uh, 63 handles on US, I'm sorry, for NASDAQ futures, and then 20, 60 ish. Yeah, that's the same thing on US 100. <laughs> it might go a little bit higher, but I, I wouldn't fall in love with it today. But the idea of doing sessions like this, okay, um, I've entertained the idea of doing more of them like this, talking, you know, like a squawk box. But I do read the comments and I do see people when they complain and I've muted so many people on Twitter in the last three weeks because of their complaining.
their entitlement, the things that they say, you should do this and you should do, don't tell me what I should do. <laughs> I don't like that. But when I share this like real time over the charts, I don't know if there's any kind of real significant delay, but you know, using a 15 minute chart and each candle, you, there's been time enough for you to observe the things I've said here live. And it, it delivered, you know, what we were looking for in both senses, except for that first little initial fair value gap. Like I said, I want to see how we, how we treated that one. Do we sell off from there? And it went up to a higher fair value gap that needed to be brought to your attention at that time. But I think this would have been great for me. Like if I was 20 years old and I was first starting out, if someone would have had the experience that I'm sharing with you and, you know, say, hey, listen, pull up your chart. And I don't need to see their chart because if I saw their chart, here's what would happen. I would want to know how their candlesticks are colored. I want to know how many days they have on their chart. Like I would be fanatical. And that's how I was doing everybody I ever looked at. Like I wanted to know everything because that's how my brain works. I don't want to just look at something and say, oh, that looks cool. Uh, you know, that's enough. No, I want to know why it works. Why does it work? I want to know every aspect about it. Whenever I had a toy when I was a kid, I took everything apart. I took everything apart because I wanted to know how it worked. Remember the Stretch Armstrong? I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself here. It's a 70s uh, toy. Yeah, I had to cut this thing open to see what was inside of it. And it's just like this little, little you know, jelly stuff. I got in trouble for it, <laughs> but I, I had to find out what was inside that thing. What made Stretch Armstrong stretch out so far? And when you let go, he would pull his arms and his legs back. Well, that, that I need to know why things work. So I'm not content with someone that says, here's a here's a thing that puts a little arrow, says it's a buy or sell. That doesn't That doesn't do it for me. Like that does not do it for me. I need to know why it should go up. And I try to inspire that in all of you. And I, I probably haven't been all that successful for, for the most part because this generation, which I've garnered a lot of attention from the younger folks that have come up you know, in the last two years or so, because there's been a lot of people that like taken my concepts and rebranded them or never mentioned me, but still taught the stuff. And then now that it's becoming more mainstream and people are recognizing that it's mine. So I'm coming to he, you know, to me, as they should, and that's fine, and it's not costing them anything. But this generation has this level of right now. I want to know it right now because they're impatient, and the whole social media online stuff has caused that to explode exponentially. And you think that your trading needs to deliver results just like that? Like you just started looking at videos last week. So therefore, you should know how to make money and quit your job. And that is not realistic. And that's one of the things that makes me seem like the grandpa of trading because I'm trying to have an old-fashioned conversation with you and slow you down so that way you can do the best at being who you are and the best version of you as a trader. I can make you something really quick and down and dirty to get out there and trade. I've done it two times, silver bullet in the 2022 model. But for the folks that thought that that was enough and then discovered that, oh, wow, there's a whole lot of other stuff that feels like it's missing, but really it's not. It's you. You're in a hurry. You're in a rush. You didn't really have that organization that you thought you had. You're really not that patient to wait for the setup, even though it's well described and defined. In both those models, you have discovered that you are not patient enough. I just muted a joker that was on the comment section this morning saying uh, ICT's concepts don't work. It's all BS. Yeah. I used them this past week. Students around the world, different countries, different walks of life, making real fortunes with it. But you're in a comment section. <laughs> Going to work. Can't can't wait for the weekend, right? So we're cooking with gas now. You need the demo account that was put aside for a little while. So that way you can see a, a real living wage. You know, I don't know how you live where you're at, you know, economically and geographically, where you are and what country, what your financial conditions are, where you are. But I would venture to say that $15,000 in one week 
that's a pretty good living. You don't even need to work the following three weeks of that month if that's what you did. I'm confident in saying that most people that are listening to this could fare rather well if they just did that one week out of the month. In fact, probably so much that if you did that once every eight weeks, you'll be doing very well. I want you to think like that. Not that you need to make 15,000, but you need to think about things in terms of income. To go back to the ends uh, series that I did. In, in my opinion, that's one of my better lectures and it really has nothing to do with things in the chart. It's how you're progressing as a trader. Why are you trading? And you wanna make a lot of money? Okay, what happens when you get a lot of money? The lot of money, means a lot of more problems, okay? That's what usually happens because you're not equipped or prepared to handle and manage that type of income. And new money is a real thing. And when you start making lots of it and you have no idea what you're doing, you go out buying cars and watches and clothing and spending on your friends and doing nonsensical things. And I get it, you wanna sow your wild oats in the beginning, okay? But don't spend money you can't afford to spend yet. Tax man's coming. Okay, and and he's getting paid <laughs> one way or the other. He's getting paid and he'll take it. Even if you don't want to give it to him, he'll take it. But you have to have a, 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 a total plan, not uh, how do I tell if the market's going to go up or down? Teach me to buy so ICT because if I had that, I would know everything. No, you won't. Let's just play devil's advocate and then I'm going to close this one. If you think that needing to know only the direction for the day what you're saying is is the is the high going to move a, a lot farther than the opening or is the low going to move a lot further lower than the opening now let's just say that you were right in knowing that 80 percent of the time you still have to determine where you're going to enter Oh, I can do that. If you, if you just gave me the bias and I was 80% chance being accurate, I know I can, I can sell short a fair value gap and, and make profits. I've already seen the evidence that many of you can't do that because if there's more than one fair value gap, like we saw the other day and people are losing their mind, how did you pick that one and not that one? Look at the range. Where does it need to go to get to 50% or equilibrium? If I'm really bearish on something, I don't want to see it go up to those higher fair gaps. Why? Because they'll act as what? A breakaway gap. Oh, right away, we've now just compounded the level of difficulty for everyone that just thinks that I need to know the bias only and I'll know how to do everything after that. No. See, that's the, that's the illusion that everybody falls victim to when they get in this industry. You think because you see an example, whether it be in a chart or a video or someone does it with a real account, you think that you'll be able to walk out there and replicate that, not knowing what is required for you to feel comfortable while doing it. Think about it. Have you ever traded with real money before? Because if you just only traded with a demo, as soon as you put on a real account trade, whether it's you know the smallest of leverage or the over leveraged, you now have a level of concern about being right or wrong that you don't have any experience to lean on and say, well, this is what you're supposed to, you're now discovering what that feels like. And it's like a brick wall for some of you when you get there, you, you won't be comfortable. You'll want to close the trade, even if it's making money, like you'll want to close it immediately because it's uncomfortable. You don't want to be there. It's like walking in and seeing your wife with another man. You wished you didn't open the door and you saw that. Like, I don't want to be here, even though it's profitable. Now, I'm not saying that another man in bed with your wife is profitable, it's profitable for him, but not for you. But that point of uncomfort, that, that area of displeasure and just not feeling like you want to be there. You, you don't know what that feels like until you've been there. And guess what? When you start making money and it's profitable and you're consistent, it's, it's a matter of time before you start inviting the idea that 
this is too good to be true. This can't keep going on. Even though I'm following the rules and it's, and it's delivering like I would hope in the best case scenario, this can't keep going on. And what you just did, you literally just invited the very thing that you don't want to see happen, but because your subconscious has been told what? This is too good to be true. This can't continue. Now you're in a winning trade again. You're in the next trade. It's a winner. You haven't hit your profit yet, but it's still moving in the right direction. You start getting antsy. Man, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait for this limit to, to get filled. I know I've only been in a trade for three minutes, but this trade is based on the entire session. I'm willing to submit myself. The rules say submit myself to 11 o'clock in the morning. It's only 10, 10. I have 50 minutes to submit to still, but I'm up $1,800. What if I come back down below a thousand? That would really tick me off. I would really feel upset about that. You're worrying about all the things outside of what you're supposed to be worrying about. Is the trade still viable? Are the candlesticks telling you that the order flow that you're trading in is still in play? Is it still drawing to the area that you thought was going to be a draw on liquidity, inefficiency or liquidity? Buy stops, sell stops to that effect. And you will talk yourself into an anxiety attack. Maybe not full-blown panic where you got to go to an emergency room, where I have done dozens of times. Yes, really had to go home. I mean, go not go home, but leave my home to go to the emergency room because I was having a heart attack or a stroke. That's how bad this will be. When you're making huge amounts of money or losing huge amounts of money, you, ha you can't even imagine the level of emotional turmoil and psychological drain. Like you, you really feel like you're going to die. <laughs> That's what it feels like, even when it's a profitable trade. Like you can't stand it. Like I, I know I'm in control. I know I can close this trade right now. But if I don't do it right now, I probably won't have the opportunity to close the trade. That's the kind of mentality it, you'll feel like. It's unbelievable level of what if thinking and you're in a rush to get to that that's why i tell you to go slow if you can't make consistency with the lowest amount of leverage whatever the lowest is and you build from that with a realistic like i gave you the other day on twitter you know using a micro if you're trading in the nasdaq that's two dollars per point you, you're going to have to really be a, an exceptional loser to blow out your account if you're doing one micro in one single day. Like if you blow your account and you're trading with $2 per point, even with the NASDAQ, like you are a special kind of not ready type of <laughs> trader. It, 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 that's a true testimony that you should have never been doing what you're doing. If, you, if you're able to hit maximum loss or drawdown and, and you're stopped for the day you clearly don't know what you're doing and what you should do is sit still learn how to trade and then resume but most of you don't you're not what you want you're not. you want to hear um tickle my ass with a feather ict and tell me i'm going to make money and there's no losing days that that's what you really want but i can't promise you no one's going to promise you that I can do that myself, but I can't promise that you're going to be able to do that. And that that honesty sometimes is offensive to you. Like you 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 don't appreciate the level of honesty I'm I'm sharing with you. And when I prove it and I give the proof that I'm an asshole for doing so, oh, you're showing off. I'm not showing off. That's not showing off with that live account. That's not, believe me, trust me, folks, that's not showing off. That's me just simply saying, stop worrying about the things that you're worrying about right now. It works. You can make money. It can be done with a real account. I can trade. You will be able to trade with real money if you listen. You'll be able to be successful if you listen and follow the rules and you're not reckless and you don't over leverage and you don't over trade. It's a default. It will happen. 
But if you're not ready, don't pretend that you are and rush in there and trying to get these funded accounts or go in there and put money in the AMP or any other broker account and think that something magical is going to happen because you, now you're ready to trade with real money. You're not ready. And if I was starting out, I would want someone to come forward and tell me these are the things that would be classic depictions of someone that's not ready. Be honest. What do you feel about it? I would have been like straight up, like I, I would not be ready for this. What prevents you from being honest? The illusion of social media and everybody's being so successful. That that that's what's the problem. The problem is is image. Image is nothing. Image and clout are nothing. They're problems. They're detractors and distractors, and they're cancer. And they're not going to help you as a trader. They're not. They're going to do more damage to you than help. All right, remember that 645 fair value gap? It should be extended to the right. If it were to hit the bottom of that and act as resistance, kind of like start supporting order flow to the downside. Draw your attention to the, give me a second here, folks, I apologize. On the US 100, uh, 15,247 and a half. And on the NASDAQ futures, the low at 330 AM Thursday, the price level is 15,339 and a half. Okay. Um, if we trade back above that 645 fair value gap, I would not be interested in doing anything with it the rest of the day. And I'm not saying you should, but I wouldn't I wouldn't even study it anymore. So there you go. But um anyway, I kind of like want to talk a little bit about that. What was the whole reason for me going into a live account and what was the point of that? Is it bragging? Is it this? Is it that? No, it's just to show you that I don't need to have revenue. You won't need to have your job. You won't need to do all these other things that everybody else does. And you can carve out a nice living wage. And you don't have to be a millionaire. You know, it's it's a matter of knowing what it is you're trying to do right now, what you're striving for. And while it might be your interest and goal to be a multimillionaire, okay, what is a multimillionaire goal for you? Is it two million? Five million? I think honestly, five million is the old. 1 million in the 90s. Like you have to have 5 million today to be what would be in the 90s when I was starting out to be what we would consider a millionaire. Back in, back then, a million dollars was something. You know, you could have bought a brand new home for like $88,000, $90,000. Not like a house that I'm living in now, but a nice, nice little neighborhood, you know, three bedroom, basement, uh, maybe a half an acre of, of land. You, know, you could have got that for about anywhere between eighty-eight and ninety-two thousand dollars. You know, brand new, right there. You're in the door. Um, it's not brick. You know, it's uh, you know a stick and drywall type thing with you know siding, vinyl siding type thing. But it's a dwelling space. You know, and today things are so expensive. You you need to have income. You need to have the cash flow, and cash flow can be derived from trading. And it doesn't need to be an everyday cash flow, but you need, do need to be net positive on the month and be comfortable with the idea that's going to take you longer than you think it is. Because right now, as it stands, if you don't do this, you have the rest of your life to get to the end of the game. And that's not even something to be proud of because you're all going to be at some point, you know, unless the good Lord takes you and you meet him in the clouds, you're going to go up in in history books as someone that's also laying in the ground. So if you don't do this, what is it going to be that gets you there? You want to be rich. You want to have a, a different type of lifestyle. You want to have a better living wage. Whatever that is for you, you need to sit that down and put it to paper. Write it down. Cast forth a vision. Write it down. It has to be something that you hold yourself to on a day-by-day -day basis. Not, I have to trade every day. No. But you're working towards that goal continuously, not losing sight of it.
pursuing it, overtaking it, not letting it run ahead too far ahead, to stay on its heels. Your goal, you will reach it if you keep working towards it. But if you don't have a goal, if you aim at nothing, that is the never miss. That's the never miss shot that everybody, everybody hits that one. If you don't plan for it and it's nothing that you have as a goal, you will hit that goal. You will hit that target every single time. Nothing. That's an easy target to hit. Simply don't do anything. Don't listen to me. Don't change anything. Don't try to be better organized. Don't be responsible. And you will have nothing to show for it. And you are a success in that regard. But is that really the type of success that you want? You have to do things that are uncomfortable. You have to press into these uncertainties. You have to know that you don't know what the market may do on that hard right edge. You have tools. I have tools. These things are probabilistic. These are things that may in fact deliver, but they might not too. Are you okay with that? If you do it wrong and you do it wrong, are you going to fault yourself and say, it's okay, I'm progressing? Or are you going to say, everything about this is wrong, it's broken, I'm giving up? Some of you haven't met that bridge yet. And how are you going to cross it? Are you going to turn around and walk the other direction? It's not just give me the bias and I'll know how to do it, ICT. It's not. I promise you, it's not. There's so many other things that you don't even understand yet about yourself. What makes you a success or a failure? That's the real secret to this. Because if you're equipped to accept short-term adversities and not see them as failures, because that means that you're taking a loss monetarily, you're having to absorb that emotionally and psychologically, and then not letting it affect you, not causing you to abandon your model or your goal. Just because you may have lost money or blown an account or failed at a funded account challenge or had a funded account and lost it, that's not failure. That's not failure. That's equivalent to you not making your wage at your job because of sickness, illness, vacation, or well, vacation. They don't pay you the overtime that you may be getting right now. You, some of you may have to work a job and get overtime just to make your ends meet. And you don't want to take a, a vacation because to take a vacation, they only give you 40 hours and you're getting less pay. So you can't even afford to take the vacation. That's a loss. Do you want to quit your job because you can't afford to take your vacation? That's the same thing you're saying if you have losing trades with your model. I'm going to quit this. I can't do this trading stuff. I just had three losing days, and I blew my funded account. If you blew your funded account and you had three losing days, you didn't know how to manage risk. There's an opportunity for you to go in there and say, okay, what did I do here that I could have done differently? How can I fix this so I don't make that same problem a reality that causes me the same disruption right now? All this is, is a speed bump. It's a detour in the road. You're, you're still going to get to your destination. It just means that you have to go a little bit further outside of what you thought was the route you're going to take. You're going to spend a little bit more time and gas than you first scheduled into the, the trip. It's all how you think, folks, how you think about it, and you prepare for it. You prepare for these things. You expect and anticipate some measure of adversities, but it doesn't unsettle you. It doesn't take the gas or the, the momentum or steam behind the engine that's you. Use it like wind in your sails. Okay. Anybody else might be looking at this shortcoming adversity, this loss of some kind, and then want to quit. And beat themselves up about it. You go into it and say, this is an opportunity. I'm going to improve and become even better because of this. Look at the fair value gap at 715. And we're still, I have not gone off of the 15 minute time frame, by the way. So watch that uh, fair value gap that formed on the 15 minute candlestick at 715 AM this morning. If it were to trade back up to that and treat that as resistance, that'd be something I would hypothetically consider as a run for sell side. May not get back up there, but it, it's something I would watch. Uh, I would not want to see it trade above 15,510 
for NASDAQ futures, and I would not want to see it trade back above 15,430 for US 100. And assuming that's the case and it doesn't do those things, I would expect the sell side to run out on uh, both. <laughs> but anyway, I, I sat down with you today because I wanted to do two things at one time. I wanted to kind of cover non-farm payroll and do something with you live. And in September, I want to go back to doing live streams on YouTube. Um, August, I'm going to be hit and miss with my presentations. Um, I'll have the lecture for backtesting and uh, journaling on Sunday. It will post at 9 p.m. Sunday, my time. Okay, so New York local time, not that I live in New York, but uh, New York local time, 9 p.m. Sunday. You'll have a lecture on my YouTube channel for backtesting and journaling. And then next week, um, I don't know what my focus is going to be for that because I have installers going to be at my house. So I I'm going to be a little distracted and worrying about whether they're going to mess up something in my house because there's going to be a lot of traffic in here. So I, I don't want to make any promises to you for what I may or may not be able to deliver next week. So I'm going to keep that whole week open and we'll play it by ear. If I talk to you on Twitter, then it is what it is. But uh, I don't want to promise any kind of teaching next week because I, I, like I said, I don't, I hate when I'd say this is what's going to happen in circumstances that are outside my control deviate me from my schedule and I'll deliver like, you know, I want to, but uh, you will have a lecture on YouTube this Sunday evening. Um, I want you to have a very pleasant and relaxing weekend. Don't be in here gambling today. And until I talk to you through video on Sunday evening, be safe.